Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick does what no governor in modern U.S. history has ever done. He orders nearly a million people to stay home. The greater Boston area shut down. Heavily armed officers in Watertown search for the suspect, house to house. Residents trapped in their homes but anxious to talk and communicate by phone, text and the internet. All day long, we just kept looking at each other, my husband and I, saying, is this really happening? And we're watching the TV, and, um, and it just felt like we were inside this strange nightmare. Those inside their homes weren't allowed to leave, and those outside weren't allowed in. It's An super scary. Like, of all the places in Boston, I never thought that they would be right here. The dramatic scene played out in front of our cameras. Parents grabbing their children and running after spending the night hunkering in their houses and then finding themselves face to face with the muzzle of a SWAT officer's rifle. It's a little stressful. It was a little stressful seeing these guys uh, pointing big guns and you're holding your daughter in your arms, but um, they're, they're doing the right thing. You know, they're trying to secure the neighborhood. Each time the SWAT team would rescue a family at the point of a gun, they would rush into the home in an armored line, guns at the ready, in case the suspect was hiding inside. And each time they cleared out a resident, they did it with a force that reflected the uncertainty of not knowing who was a friend and who was a foe. And he banged on the door. I looked up. I was shocked. And there was a gun or two guns or whatever pointing down at me and the guys. And they said, get out, get out. I said, okay. And I wanted to know, uh, you know, do I get my shoes? Or just get out, get out. Okay. All right. The pattern was dramatically repeated time and again, house after house. But finally, it became apparent all the families were out of their homes and the suspect was not inside. It was terrifying. Chaos in the street sent people running for cover to their home. Something's Adam Harding in Watertown now. And uh, Adam, it really has been a terrifying scene over there. You know, Amanda and Kim, we know that there are anywhere from three to five different crime scenes here in Watertown, and a lot of these are residential neighborhoods. And you can imagine when these investigators are going house by house, if you weren't already inside by the time they started this search, you haven't been allowed back inside ever since. This was now 14, 15, 16 hours for some of these people. So as we await an update from police here where they're briefing the media, a lot of these homeowners who haven't been able to watch the coverage from their own home because they haven't been inside have actually been turning to us out on the streets as they simply wait to see when they may be able to return back home. Make a hole, make it wide. A normally quiet Watertown neighborhood. It's nice, I don't lock my doors. <laughs> rocked by explosive violence. There's probably 35 cops on foot, like, running towards us. Heavily armored state police, their rifles locked in place, searching house after house, looking for the second suspect in Monday's marathon bombing. I mean, I hope the guy's not, like, in my house, but... I mean, I hope they catch him. Hours of searching and still no sign of their suspect, who authorities say landed in this neighborhood after a wild shootout with police that left one officer dead and another badly injured. I called my mom, and she's actually glad that we're not in that area. She's like, would be more afraid of us to be in our apartment, like the doors locked, than to be out here where we know we're okay. Neighbors kept from getting inside their homes for the better part of an entire day. I'm certainly not happy about it. I wanted to sleep. After we were here earlier and we saw how, what, like, what was going on, we kind of figured it would be a while. Law enforcement teams feared the suspect may have littered explosives along the roadways. Those inside their homes weren't allowed to leave, and those outside weren't allowed in. It's super scary. Like, of all the places in Boston, I never thought that they would be right here. And it really has certainly been a nightmare for these homeowners going on now 16 hours without getting inside. Many of them say, though, despite the sleep, they appreciate all of the work. They understand why they're not allowed back inside. They're doing their best to remain hyper vigilant, though. Admittedly, a lot of them are just cautious and wondering when they may be able to return back to their home. But of course, until an arrest is made, it may be some time. Live in Watertown, Adam Harding, 7 News.
He banged on the door, I looked up, I was shocked, and there was a gun, or two guns or whatever, pointing down at me, and the guys, and they said, get out, get out! I said, okay, and I wanted to know, uh, you know, do I get my shoes off? Just get out, get out, okay, all right. The pattern was dramatically repeated time and again, house after house. 